Hello, Gabriella. I hope you're doing well. Today, I want to talk about an experience I had interviewing three non-music majors about just life in general and their music making habits. Excuse me. So there were three people I selected for this project. Um, one of them was Gregory Groves, my father, Claire Groves, my sister, and one of my dear friends, Florencia. So to start, we'll talk about my dad's musical river. He started playing the flute in middle school, and he also participated in his middle school's band. He felt strongly encouraged by the sense of teamwork and friendship that this band provided. Um, and through high school, he continued um, taking music as an elective and playing in his high school's band. He was a very active participant in this ensemble. And even this particular band won several competitions and participated in national band competitions in Montreal. So although music was not his intended career path, he continued to enjoy that sense of camaraderie that the band atmosphere provided. Claire's story is a bit more involved. She participated in music classes starting in grade one. She mentions thoroughly enjoying the rain stick in grade five. Um, at an early age, she showed interest in popular artists such as Lady Gaga, allowing her to build a notable sense of confidence. She even sang a Michael Jackson song at assembly in grade seven. After this experience, Claire began to play the clarinet in her mandatory music class because she thought it would be an easy instrument to play. However, she quickly learned that the clarinet is not easy, but that was partially because her music teacher failed to give her any proper instruction on the instrument. She tried to switch to trumpet, but yet again, it was too difficult as her teacher really failed to give her the proper um, instruction on the instrument. Overall, Claire didn't really enjoy her music classes um, because of her teacher's sort of um, negligence to give her proper instruction. And she really did not like having to wipe off her lipstick um, before playing instruments, which is sort of a funny remark that she made. So last but certainly not least, let's talk about Florencia's musical journey. She took vocal classes in high school. And as these classes forced students to perform publicly, she believes they helped her build a greater sense of confidence. One thing that really stuck out to me in this interview is that her vocal teacher really gave her students freedom in terms of what they could sing. And I really feel like that enhanced Florencia's experience um, in terms of enjoyment. Ultimately, she wanted to pursue criminology in university and needed a specific course load that did not include music, but she continues to be more involved in music in university by auditioning for musical theater productions. So the question we've all been waiting for, what did you learn? One of the most common phrases I heard during the interviews was, I didn't have enough course space or time to take music courses. Now, although this assignment certainly isn't a comprehensive study about music education curriculums, I think the commonality of this statement demonstrates a very important concept, and that is that music classes are not prioritized in the school system. So I believe that potentially guidance counselors are probably telling students that the elective is not relevant or it's useless um, to their current career path, um, making them not want to take it. And I find this very concerning as music classes can teach so many skills that extend beyond the music classroom. Um, so that's just one thing I found very interesting from these interviews. Another common phrase I heard within these interviews was, I never felt engaged by the classical music education curriculum. And I think this really indicates that the current curriculum may be failing to engage students. Claire's interview gave an excellent perspective on this issue. She felt that proficiency on orchestral instruments was not applicable to real life as most students enjoy pop music. Above all, this may be why students do not feel engaged by the modern curriculum. An adjustment to this curriculum may be ideal as seen in Florencia's interview. Her teacher allowed her students to practically sing whatever they want, wanted. And clearly this unstructured paradigm is effective when done correctly, as gives students an element of choice, which is something that a lot of these current curriculums fail to do. The final really common phrase I heard was, I dance to music at the club. And the commonality of this statement illustrates one medium in which music can be involved in anyone's life, regardless of if they're a music major or not. Yeah, they may not be active listening, but they're still driving along with the music. So whether people realize it or not, music is heavily integrated within our lives. And the fact that this is the case yet many schools fail to value it as a legitimate subject surprises me. Most students never use calculus in their everyday life, but is, is, is usually seen as more important or useful. 
music fills emotional needs for many. And I think it's really sad that we're not sort of um, pursuing that option. From this presentation, that is really all I learned. Thank you for listening.